I've talked with people from all over Massachusetts who are on the front lines in the opioid epidemic. And my staff and I also conducted a statewide survey. And I'll just give you some of the samples of what we heard. At the High Point Treatment Center in Plymouth, Massachusetts, the addiction treatment and recovery service providers talked about the challenges they face in recruiting and retaining enough treatment professionals. At the Salem Fire Department, the first responders explained how they're saving lives by expanding the use of uh, overdose reversal medications. At nearly every town hall, from Barnstable to Lowell to Springfield, people shared stories about family members and friends who have died or who continue to grapple with addiction. And in many of our communities, police officers have focused on redirecting those with addiction away from incarceration and into treatment by working hand in hand with healthcare providers. So Secretary Tilly, I wanna follow up on that last point and on the work that you've already engaged in. I know you've done a lot of work in Kentucky around criminal justice reform yeah. and improving access to addiction treatment. Can you just say a word about how important it is to have programs that get low-level drug offenders into treatment and support services instead of into prison? It's one of, if not the most important thing we can do in criminal justice and in public health as it relates to this addiction nightmare, we're in both. For so many reasons, because there's only so much of our tax base that can be dedicated in anywhere in this state, or in our state or the country at the moment, and when you siphon off and cut off the ability because of your corrections population or this incredible crush on your court system or law enforcement, you, you, you know, again, you cut off your ability to, to attack it in the right ways. And, and then I would also say that, that you actually make the problem worse by incarcerating those who need treatment. It's criminogenic. You cut off hope. You make it more difficult for them to get jobs with a felony on their record. That we're, we're working on reentry every day. The country is waking up to the fact that we have to give people that second and third chance at opportunity when they have criminal records. 70 million Americans, because of this epidemic in my mind, now have a criminal record in this country, one out of every three adults. So I could take the next two, two minutes and 25 seconds to detail each and every impact it's had on our system. We have the highest percentage of children in Kentucky who have had or have an incarcerated parent. Uh. Think about the strain. We have 8,500 kids today in foster care. If we could treat those in settings where they can keep their children, and that can occur, by the way, rather than having this incredible rate of per capita incarceration for women, by the way, this country, out of every three women incarcerated in the world, one is here in the United States. Yeah. And Kentucky is not doing much better than that as a, as a state. So we, we're working on that. So, so let me ask you, though, in following up on this, I know that um, you mentioned earlier the LEAD program, the Law Enforcement Assisted mm -hmm. Diversion Program from uh, Senator Murray's home state. We have similar program uh, in Massachusetts uh, that we began with the Police Assisted Addiction Recovery Initiative which was founded in Gloucester, Massachusetts. But the LEAD programs allow police officers to redirect people into low-level, uh, uh, red uh, redirect low-level drug offenders into community-based services instead of charging them with a drug offense. As you point out, saves lives, saves money. I just wanna ask you if you could just underline for a minute here, we talk often when we're talking about addiction and, and how to fight back. We talk about the role of doctors, we talk about the role of hospitals in doing this, but we rarely talk about the role of supporting our police and the importance of supporting our police in this. And I just wonder, we have just a little tiny bit of time left. Could I ask you, Secretary Tilson, to say a word about that, Tilly, to say a word yeah. about that? Absolutely. We have over 8,000 law enforcement officers that, um, again, work within our cabinet in one sense or another. And, and by the way, thank you for the ANGEL Initiative, Massachusetts. We mentioned that earlier, Kentucky became the first to, to mimic that and is working well with our, our state police posts. Having said that, police, um, frontline, um, again, soldiers in this regard are overwhelmed. 
and they need more tools. Oftentimes I have chiefs tell me that they need more social workers, mm -hmm. frankly, in their departments to work with their officers and officers themselves tell me they need more social work capacity. We are training in things like crisis intervention training, de-escalation, that yields tremendous results. I would point you to quickly to the Data Driven Justice Initiative that's now in the Arnold Foundation, Law Enforcement Assisted Diversion is we're using now, which began in, in Seattle, again, stepping up in all manner of ways to, to allow first responders to be trained in how to meet people in these situations and divert them away from what is, again, a crush on local jails, not to mention state prisons. And again, I, I, I think the redirection of these offenders is, is one of the most important things we could talk about today. I, I really do appreciate it and couldn't, couldn't agree more with your point. I led a number of my colleagues in calling for more funding to support LEAD and other diversion programs like it. You know, communities and police departments need every dollar they can to be able to wage this battle. When I talk to people in Massachusetts who are on the front lines in this epidemic, one thing is clear to me, and that is that President Trump's promises to treat the epidemic as a public health emergency won't get the job done unless there are also significant increases in federal funding to support them. Our patients and our families deserve this. Thank you.